Well, hello, everybody. It's me, Jen. <laughs> I'm finally here. And I'm super excited today. This is a very special event that we're doing today. And I'm so super happy and excited to be here. I hope that you guys are all doing okay today. I, um, first off, just want to tell you guys that um, if you're new here, I'm Jennifer Zimmerman. And this stream is going to be our Animal Nature Part 2 stream. The other part, the first part, was done by my friend Lisa Matrakin, who did uh, my coloring page um, earlier today, Noble Fox. And I am going to be coloring her page today. So this is actually an art swap today. And... It's interesting because we um, decided to, to do this. It was kind of a big experiment <laughs> to see how we could do this together. And it's actually been really kind of neat planning this with her and having fun and not taking ourselves too seriously. So welcome to my channel if you've never been here before. I'm going to do my best to try to stay on top of um, the chat. I just, this is a whole new setup for me. I'm a little nervous because I've never done this before. I used to stream from my phone, so it's a little bit different. So I'm gonna do my best to try to keep an eye on the chat, but forgive me if I don't answer your questions right away. I will keep peering at it. But I have gone fancy, I mean for me, over the past week, a little bit more than a week. Um, I just want to give a huge, huge shout out to Lisa and tech. Oh my gosh, they're godsends. They're such good people. And I am, I used to think I was somewhat tech savvy, but I guess not. <laughs> this is a whole new ball game for me. So I actually have a couple different things going on. So it's a little um, trickier and it's a little less basic. So hopefully this stream will be of more interest to you now that it's going to be a little bit smoother and you'll get to see a little bit more. So that's my goal at least. And I apologize ahead of time if things go awry. I'm going to try to keep it together. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to do my best, but I will probably screw up here. So I'm doing my best. Just know that. And I just wanted to um, just tell you guys I'm really excited about this. And if you guys didn't see Lisa's um, stream earlier, please make sure you check that out after we're done going live here. Um, it was awesome this morning. She did an amazing job on my fox, and this should be fun, right? Okay. All right. Let's see who's here. I see Lisa's here, and Kimmy, and Abby. Oh, and Tech is here too. Hi, Tech. And Kitten. Who else here? Nancy. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Cats Play. Well, it's good that you guys are all here. That's good, that's good. Okay, so I am gonna do, I'm just making sure that I have everything set up so I can see things real clearly. And yeah, I think we're ready to get started. So just so you guys know, this is what I've been working on over the past week, trying to figure out this configuration and Lisa and Tech were helping me figure out what I needed to get this up and running. Um, and it's really confusing. And all I can say is my boys, I have two teenage boys, and they're like, whoa, which is a huge compliment right now coming from them because they say everything I do is cringe. So this is good. Like, I did a good job. I'm very, very proud of myself. For having, get, for having gotten this accomplished, but I know it's gonna get screwed up along the way. So, and I'm not super fancy. I am not high tech like my friends, 
Um, this is super low tech, but you know, but look, I can do this and I can show you my iPad. You can see what I'm looking at. You can see my screen here. Um, the one thing I want to let you guys know is there is at least a 20 second delay. And in some cases it might even be longer than that. Um, but we'll do our best. Okay. And I'm going to try to do a giveaway, you know, the way that, that my buddy Belinda does it. Um, and hopefully I won't screw it up. If I do, I promise I'll make it up to you guys, but I'm going to try to do it because I want to give away some stuff. So if you're just joining us, I'm Jennifer and I'm about to get started here. We're going to be doing some coloring today. You guys, oh, I didn't grab, let me just grab that real quick. Lisa's page. So and I hope you guys are in your PJs today because, you know, we're all in our bathrobes and, and whatnot today. <laughs> because it's Saturday morning. You should be, right? So I have, if you look here, hold on. You can see, yeah, I have Lisa's page right here. And what I did for this particular um demonstration I'm going to do for you guys is I printed it. I usually print on tone tan, but I also have a pad of tone gray. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think that that's Lisa's favorite, the tone gray, right? So I figured I was going to channel the spirit of Lisa a little bit and get my tone gray on. Okay, so all I did was I cut down my paper to fit and I I actually made a couple little edits to this. I actually printed it lighter and I actually added a couple circles and I hope Lisa doesn't mind that. She had a number at the bottom of her page at the bottom of her page and I think it has something to do with the other images that are um, included in this book. Um, but because I am kind of a gem queen, um, I felt like I needed to add some gems some somewhere here. So I just I turned them into pearls instead of the numbers with a circle around them. Um, let's see who's here. Hi, Joanna. Hi, CB. Kelly. Oh, yay. There's some people here I know. Hi, Kenny. Okay. So, sorry, sidetracked. Um, I don't have a sidekick with me, which would be such a bonus if my husband would come and help me out, but I don't think I don't think he'll do that. And plus, he's not. I'm I'm more tech savvy than he is, which is I guess kind of scary, but it's the truth. But anyway, so here is Lisa's beautiful page, and then here's a version that I printed on gray. Okay, and then if you didn't see earlier, oh, and by the way, here's my finished page, which you guys should just be so proud of me because I actually finished something, because I don't get a chance to color very often. Hi, Zeely. Um, I don't get a chance to color very often at all. Um, Lisa will, will attest to the fact that everything, there's always some kind of drama going on in my life. And it's because I'm mom first and with a house full of boys, I always say I live in a frat house. All my animals are boys too. We have two cats, a dog, I have two kids, and then my third child, my husband. Um, so there's a lot of crazy energy around here. So I am constantly going, 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 um, Aww, thank you guys. Hi, Mona. Um, so I am trying to take care of all this myself, which is a little overwhelming. Like I don't even know how people do this normally, but I think I figured out a system and we'll be good. So here is my page that I completed for this event. This is what I did. This is Kevin, Lisa's page from her Fantastic Familiars. Am I, am I getting that right? Lisa, I think that's what it's called, your book, um, which is, I think I have links in my, um, my video description. And I know, I'm pretty sure that she has this stuff as PDF and as a um, hard copy book if you go on Amazon. <laughs> yes, oh my gosh, you guys have no idea. I, just to, just to give you an indication of what I'm dealing with in my household. So 
my husband had a birthday this week. What did I get him for his birthday? Legos. Mm -hmm. He was so excited. And I really didn't know which set to get him, but my older son knew which one to get. And so he just advised me and we got the set. And he was so excited. So excited. I mean, this is what I deal with. So anyway, um, so I am going to show you guys how to do this background. We're going to focus on this background today. Um, but in the meantime, um, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to show you the uh, technique that I use to do the feathers as well. I'm not going to sit and do all the feathers. It would take me way too long, but I just do want to show you. And the other thing that I'm going to show you is the materials that I'm using, which is mostly colored pencils, but not entirely colored pencils. Um, I'm going to be using pan pastels. Do you guys know what pan pastels are? These little guys. So pan pastel, and by the way, I have in my description, maybe I didn't put it in there. I think the ladies have it. I think Kimmy and Abby have it, but um, I have a link to my Amazon influencer shop. And what I do is it's like basically a shop that I set up through Amazon and it's a way for you to find everything that I use. It doesn't cost you a cent more than it would if you just went on Amazon yourself and found this stuff. But what it does is it, it's my choices and I give you little notes for everything about why I think this works or what versus what would be better for a certain situation. And it, it's just sort of a guide for you. And at the same time, if you do purchase it from there, then it's like pocket change from Amazon to me. So for example, and it's, trust me, you guys, you can't make a living doing that, but <laughs> unless you're really, really good at it, I guess. But for example, this past week, I got, what did I get? Here it is. Uh, nope, right here. I haven't tried, I have, I just got this little Pasca, um, or little Pasca pen. And that is something I bought with that money that has accumulated over so much time. So I test stuff out and I use it for these videos. So it's kind of like it goes full circle or comes full circle, however you say it. Um, Whatever you are, if you do if you do purchase something through there, it does help this. So I do appreciate that. Just know that. Speaking of appreciation, I just want to stop for a second and say, I know I thanked Lisa and Tech, but I also want to thank my amazing mods who are just such wonderful people. Like, who takes time to do this stuff? And who's available on call like this? So Abby and Kimmy today are my mods. Thank you, guys. My Australian crew is sleeping right now, so <laughs> so they have they have the day off. Um, they can come and watch it later, and I feel badly because I usually go on so that all my Australians can can join us too. But it's like the middle of the night there for them, I think. So um, anyway, um, I just want to say thank you to them, and then my mod for for my mods for my um, um, modern coloring group, which is. Um, Modern Coloring with Jennifer on Facebook. If you go on that, Modern, Co I'm sorry, Modern Coloring Club, I'm talking too fast. Um, if you go on there, you will, um, you can join that group. And um, my mods in there are my lovely longtime friend, Tina, who was my, was the first Australian colorist I met when I got involved in this industry. And um, secondly, Nicola Tagger, and it's going to be her anniversary. So everybody say thank you, Nicola, and and happy anniversary. And the other thing I want to tell you guys is that we are doing in the club. We are doing um, a oh, feathers and fur. I think that's what Nicola called it. Nicola is running a color along for us over the next. I don't remember if it's two weeks or a month, but she is running. This. And what it's what you can do is you can use um, my Noble Fox page, or there are a number of different pages, and they're all listed there that you can use. And at the end of the month, 
we will randomly choose somebody to give a PDF prize to. And it's just fun to do. And you can be inspired by this event here and apply what you learn here, there. So now the other cool thing is Nicola, who is one of the admins for the coloring community group on Facebook, has also set up the same event there. And we are including Lisa's work in there. So you can do a combination. We are their featured artists, Lisa Matrokin and myself. You can use either of our pages and then put them into that event and win prizes and have fun while you're doing it. So I encourage you guys to go and to get involved in that. So yay, just something else to do. All right, so I'm gonna just take a look at the chat real quick. Make sure I'm not missing anything crucial. I hope that you guys are, hope the stream is coming through okay. Hi, Helen. Did I say hi to you already? I don't even know. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> I think I have seen everybody so far. Thanks, Kimmy, for posting that link. I appreciate it. Hi, Jasmine. Okay. All right. Yeah, guys, please remember to, to subscribe. Wait, hold on. I have to do my fancy subscribe. Okay. And ring my little bell so you get notifications. You guys know that I don't go on on a weekly basis. I don't go on on a regular basis because there's just too much chaos in my life at all times. So I do my best and I have now that I am set up and I have invested in this and I've been meaning to do this for so long, I'm going to do some more live streams. I promise. In fact, what I have asked people to do, and I put a post on my Facebook artist page, but what I'm asking you to do is send me a message on my Facebook artist page telling me, giving me some options for topics that you would like to see covered in a live stream, something you'd like to learn. You guys, if you don't know what I do or aren't familiar with my work and you're just here now because you are a big Lisa fan and she's brought you my way, um, I've done a couple of coloring books. In fact, let's take a look here. This is the book, Bella Futura is the book that my facts page came from. This book came out a couple of years ago. Um, and it is available on both Etsy and Amazon. Etsy, it's a PDF, and Amazon, it is a um, paper book. So you guys can, if you're interested in that, I believe that I have a link on there. If you go to my website, there are um, some direct links to Amazon as well. Um, so that's one thing I've done. In addition to that, oops. I have a series of books you might be familiar with called The Secrets of Coloring. Um, and in case you're not familiar, they're step-by-step -step how to color a so-and-so. So in this case, this is a cat's eye. Or if you'd rather do a snake's eye, you can do a snake's eye. Or a wolf's eye. <laughs> I also cover skin tones and some special stuff like pan pastels, which is what we're gonna work a little bit with today. And I teach you some basics too. Um, in addition to this one, last year, I came out with the Secrets of Coloring too. And this one has more glowing effects. Um, that was sort of my focus because I was so inspired by what I was seeing happen with all the colorists. So, Let's see what's going on with chat real quick. Hi, Donna. Hi, Eva. Oh, somebody's having some trouble. I hope you guys have it figured out. Oh, thanks, Helly. So, yeah, so I did this one last year. And I know it's... This book took me forever and a half to make, and I teach you all different kinds of things. And it is such, it's a labor of love and it's a pain in the butt all at the same time. <laughs> so we did holiday candy. There's my Easter eggs. We did holiday candy, and it's, it's also just learning how to create certain effects and stuff. Um, 
this one will be good for Spooktober. I hope you guys are planning on coming to our Spooktober event that Lisa and Shelly Pacini head up. Um, that will be in October. Gummy bears. So anyway, so here, this is another book and it's available on Amazon. Animals, mushrooms, <laughs> And skin tones. Everybody wants to know their skin tones. So, and then I have some guest tutorials. So this was from my friend Selena. Um, you may know her as Colored by Me. Um, and we did some holiday stuff too. So anyway, these two books are available on Amazon. It's a set. Well, it's a individually sold, individual series. Um, individually sold books that are part of a series, I should say. Um, anyway, so what I'm going to do today, because this is a little different today, and Lisa and I decided because, I don't even know how we ended up coming up with this, Lisa, do you remember, about figuring out um, what subject we should be doing this on? We somehow decided animals. We, I think we just started talking about animals, because we were both complete animal freaks. I am a total animal freak. I love animals. And my, I have, as I said, two cats and a dog. And unfortunately, one of my cats is really sick. He started getting really sick a couple nights ago. And we were at the vet a couple days ago, which is so weird right now because it's all curbside. Because in the U.S., things are crazy here with the virus, unfortunately. So <clears throat> he is not doing well, and um, I'm concerned about him. Um, so... And Lisa had some animal drama this morning, too. <laughs> There's always some kind of chaos, right? Always. So, and, you know, I, it's crazy. But anyway, so we decided to do animals. And this is, you know, I, I get so many requests to do um, skin tones and portraits, which I love to draw portraits, which, by the way, I have a new portrait that I've been working on as of last week. And... I almost finished it in time to show you today, but I don't want to show you yet because it's not, it's not a hundred percent and I want to make sure it's cleaned up before I show it to you guys. So that should be available by Monday. So be looking in my Etsy shop, make sure you're set up for alerts in my, in my Etsy shop. And I will also post a picture of it on my Facebook artist page. Okay. So let's just say, <laughs> yes, we both love animals. Yeah. I'm so cuckoo about animals. Oh, thank you, Lisa. Yeah, I know. He's not, he's not well. He's not well. And I have, my other cat is hilarious. I wish, the, the other night I was doing a little test with Abby and Kimmy. And it was so funny. My husband came in here and <clears throat> my other cat is so bad. He's just bad. Gets into everything. And he was, he'd gotten into some cheese. Of course. If anybody leaves anything out on the counter, and his favorite thing is eggs, which is so weird. Um, but yeah, so I love animals. So we just decided to do this animal stream. And I'm so envious of Lisa that she has a peacock living in her backyard. I can't even imagine. And I don't know if you guys have seen her backyard, but oh my gosh, I'm in the middle of suburbia here. She has this beautiful, scenic backyard that's so inspiring. I mean, oh, how nice, especially at a time like right now. So anyway, um, okay, you guys ready to get started here? <laughs> Your dogs love eggs. Well, yeah, my dog will eat anything except for spinach. Although he might eat cooked spinach. But anyway, yeah, but my cat will eat literally, he loves pumpkin. The cat loves pumpkin. Actually, both of my cats love pumpkin. Uh, maybe I'll try giving that to the sick one today because he's just not eating right now. It's... Uh, anyway, um, okay, so let's get started, all right? Okay, and I am going to switch us here. You guys can all see this okay, hopefully. And I'm going to focus on the background today, but before I do that, I'm going to show you how I used pan pastels to kind of help me. And I've had people... Um, ask me questions about pan pastels and like why I really need them. 
And to answer that question, it's kind of like an added bonus. Do you know how, and something else that Lisa does that I was going to try to attempt a little bit today. It's a little different because I don't have the same supply as her, but you know how Lisa uses her, and Belinda, I think, does this too, um, the chalk pastel. Well, it's kind of like that. You kind of use it to lay something down to help you sort of plan ahead, like map out your colors. And that's a great way to use pan, pan pastel. That's number one. And it's a general way. I know people ask this all the time. How do you get rid of the tooth in your paper? Well, this is one way. If you plug up that tooth, you are filling in with fine particles. You are filling in that tooth so that it's not an issue for you. So um, it, the pan pastel does help in that regard. It also can make a more vivid overall color when you are combining it with colored pencils or other materials. So it has multiple purposes. Sometimes at the end of an image that I've been coloring, it's, you can't even see the pan pastel anymore. And that's because I've used so much pencil over it, but it also helps to set, the pencil helps to set the pan pastel. And it's just a nice combination and it helps you along the way. That's really why I like it. Plus you can add some, some sort of um, chunks of more saturated color than your pencil would give you, which is a beautiful thing while you're working. So anyway, so pan pastel. So that is what this is here. Um, I have, how many do I have here? Like two dozen or something? I think I have close to that. This is what I have right here. So this is a set right here. Um, and I'll put my colors out here later for you guys, but I will be using this Thalo Blue. I may use some Violet. Um, I have white here. This is the light blue that I have, and it's actually pearlized. You guys see that? It's really pretty. It, this is pearlescent blue. And then this one here is Violet Tint. Violent, violet tint, violet tint. Sorry, I'm losing it here. Um, and I'm going to show you how I actually used a little bit of this red, which is permanent red. I will list these colors for you when I'm all done. Black, and I think that that is, well, maybe I, I did use a little bit of this color here, which is yellow ochre. Okay, so. Yeah, pan pastels, and I do have these on my Amazon um, influencer page. I do. They are wonderful. And let me just tell you a little bit about pan pastels before I start, because I just want to explain to you why I would use this as opposed to a regular pastel, which you can use a regular pastel too. In fact, you can combine them, which we could even do a little today. Um, but the pan pastel, and by the way, these are the tools. These are the knives that you use with the pan pastel. Or if you don't want to use the knives, let's see if I put my little ball here there. If you don't want to use the knives, you can use Q-tips or cotton buds as some of you call them. Um, or you can use any kind of makeup applicator. Um, but when you get a set, it comes with a bunch of different shaped materials and for different purposes to get into different places. So Pan pastels are just wonderful. They're absolutely amazing. Um, but what they do is they are uh, a powder, but that powder, you can see when I move it around, that powder kind of stays in place. It's not as dusty as a regular pastel. So it kind of has like a little bit of grab to it. And it's really nice because that means it's going to be more likely to stay put. Um, and yeah, Sherry, I see you said you use um, eyeshadow, and you can definitely use eyeshadow as well. So if you guys want to do this and try using eyeshadow or using regular stick pastels, you could do that. But I am going to just show you some basics of how I put the feathers on the bird, how I got them started, how I mapped them out. And then I'm going to show you how to do this misty purple background. Okay, so I thought that that would be kind of fun to do today. All right, so I'm going to get out... And I'm going to use my um, original 
This makes a mess here. Not as bad as a regular pastel, but it is a little bit messy. And what I have done is I've actually pre-recorded some of the feather um, stuff. So I will put that up on YouTube as a separate video later so you guys can watch it um, so that you can get more of an idea of exactly what I did and, you know, how I did all that. Because um, I know that we just won't have time to cover it all. chalk. Ooh. Yeah, that's an idea. <laughs> Diane. Oh, by the way, let me just say something about Pan Pastel too. The people who own the Pan Pastel company are amazing. They're wonderful people. And I support companies that are, that appreciate people that appreciate their products and that have good customer service. And I've done a lot of stuff with the Pan Pastel Company and they're amazing. Um, and, you know, kind of like, and if you, I know that Lisa just did something um, for Black Widows and I know that Albert, he's amazing. Um, support companies that are good to their customers. And this is definitely one of them. I know their products are expensive, but you don't actually need that much. You could just start with a few. So, just to show you more light on the picture is this not good i think that's what i got is that okay you guys it's a it's um the the picture the lines are faded because i because i um made it a lighter image so that might be what what you're seeing there so this is like a real regular picture so it's not the light it's just the picture it's the way i printed it and it's on gray paper Yeah, and they do come in those little cool trays, which are just awesome. They're so convenient. They're great for storage and just great for toting around. So, all right. So I want to show you first how I used Pan Pastel to map out where I'm going to put the shadows and whatnot of the... Um, the peacock's body. Why don't I zoom in just a little? Maybe that's a little bit better for the time being. And I have my picture here for reference as well. Oh, or some of my stuff is in the way here. Um, so what I did was here is um, one of my knife tools and this one is a rounded edge tool and you can see they, as I said, they vary depending on what you want to do with them. But because I'm doing sort of an organic shape, I want to stick with a round one. It'll just be easier to maneuver. So what I did was I used a little bit of my Pan Pastel. And by the way, you guys, and like I said, you could use some regular pa regular Pastel as well. So I do have some regular Pastel. You just need to take a, an X-Acto knife. And just to show you guys, if you don't have Pan Pastel, an X-Acto knife and you can get a little bit of it off like that okay so if you wanted to do that you totally could now what I will tell you is it's not going to stick as well um, because it's not band pastel but you can get some of the color in there so and it is good for you know just helping to plug up that tooth and to lay it out okay so I'm going to start out with pan pastel itself but again, if you need to use regular pastel, that is fine. And I do like to use a piece of parchment paper to kind of blend the colors when I need to. So I just put a little bit on here. And you can see how rich and pigmented it is, actually. Just a little bit goes a long way. And I'm going to establish kind of a an area that's going to be what I call my core shadow, which is um, the darkest dark on an object itself. And peacock feathers are iridescent. 
so they have actually different colors within them. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. And if you just keep on adding some little layers, it will build up and it will really get nice and rich for you. Um, something that you can do is, if you want to, you could, before you start even doing this, you could take your, I can't remember if I did this for this, you guys, because it's been a while now. Let's see, where is my Prismacolor pencil? Did I not get one out? My, I, I'm looking for my white Prismacolor, I don't see it. So I'm just going to use my Derwent. Um, but something that you can do, if you want to, is you can go over some of these lines first and just kind of plug them in so that you know where some of these feathers will go. It's up to you how you want to handle it, but if it helps you, see, because I can't see through that I think I should have done that before. Oops. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done this and I did not take good notes for myself. I usually take notes because I will forget. So I will just sort of outline Lisa's lines here. And get into some of these little spaces just because what that does is I'm not going real hard either. I'm just doing it enough to see where these feathers lay. And I can still see through my pan pastel quite a bit here, so that's good, we're fine. Do as I say, not as I do. I don't wanna overdo it because I don't want too much white to show through in the end. But, pe but peacocks have a lot of variation. Their feathers have a lot of variation with um, uh, iridescence and contrast, depending on what part of the feathers we're looking at. And so, I'm going to show you how to do this part. I'm not going to work on these areas. These are like brown and greens, but I did pre-record some of what I was working on. I just didn't hit record when I did this the first time because a lot of times I start something and then I'm like, I don't like it and I start over again and I didn't think I was going to get it right the first time and I think I did okay, so, which is just kind of funny. So I'm not going to do like every little feather here because it would just take too much time, but I'm going to get a few that I can see popping out here. And what's interesting is the pan pastel will go over the pencil, but you can still see through it. So if you do ever want to like do a drawing and, and the pan pastel will actually speed up your process too, that's something I forgot to mention. It actually speeds up your process, kind of like marker does. If you use marker underneath your pencil, which I highly recommend. I do that for almost everything if I'm not using pan pastel. It does speed up the process. It does make your colors richer, more vibrant, and it also gets rid of a lot of the tooth. So if you don't like a lot of tooth showing, which is a personal preference, it will help. Okay, I think I got most of our feathers down. I'm glad I caught that because I'm pretty sure I did this the first time around. <laughs> I just forgot. I forgot. Okay. So this might not turn out as well as my other one did, but it never does when I'm going live. I get nervous. Can't help it. Okay. All right. So do you guys see that? See how I just, I used that and I got it all on there. So now I'm going to go back into my pan pastel and over some of these areas, you can see through it now. 
here's the really cool part. I'm adding some more reflective dark core areas here because he's so reflective and you can see through it. Yeah, the um, the ordering right now with Amazon, I know it's a little crazy because I ordered some stuff for the streams here and some of it came super quickly and then other parts of it took forever. So it really depends. It also depends on where it's coming from, which by the way, if I have time, I'll try to remember to show you guys what I got, a little cool device that I got here. Speaking of Amazon items, I don't think I put this, I don't think I put it on my, um, no, maybe I did put it on my list. I'm not sure, but that is something that took forever to get to me, but it was worth the wait. I'll show you. It's a pencil holder. All right, so I'm adding a little bit more pan pastel, and you can see I'm really adding a lot at a time here, right? And I'm going to do a light coat here, and I'm actually going to mix it with a little bit of my pearlescent blue. It's a little bit lighter. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Yeah, I, I do get nervous. I don't know why. I just do. I'm going just a little bit lighter here, but I'm plugging up that tooth and I'm adding, and what you're seeing here is not quite the lightest light that you're going to see on this peacock, but it's going to give it a little shimmery effect there. And already it's starting to um, look a, a little bit dimensional and I can use the tip of this or in this one you could if you wanted to you could use like a pointed one to get into an area like that and so now we're now that I know where all these feathers go I'm gonna start spreading this out just a little bit more and making it a little bit more vibrant so this is like my base base coat now the nice thing about pan pastel is if you make a mistake you can go back in and really easily correct it. Oh my God, did I not put out my, <laughs> I don't have my, my Mono Zero eraser, where is it? Oh boy. Well, I guess I'll have to use my kneaded eraser because I don't know what I did with my Mono Zero. But you guys know I can't live without that. So I'm gonna use a kneaded eraser here. But you guys can see it picks up really easily, right? So it's wonderful to work with is my point. So I've got all this vibrant color here now. And if I want to add a little bit of a little bit more depth, then I can add a little bit of black. Or I can mix some black and some blue. Sorry, I'm making a mess over here. So the black is going to kill the intensity of the color, but it is going to make it darker. So just keep that in mind. So if you want to keep it really intense, you probably don't want to use a lot of black. Isn't that pretty, Lisa? I love, I love these colors. Love, love. So you can add a little bit more intense, or I should say um, contrast here, where this darkest part of the core shadow is going to be. And then what I like to do is I just take a paper towel and I just clean off in between colors so I don't, even if you contaminate it, it wipes off really easily, but just, you know, so that it doesn't get onto your paper. It's gray paper, Sherry. I'm using Lisa's favorite. I'm channeling my inner Lisa today because it's like Freaky Friday. Did you guys watch our video? <laughs> no, and see, I, I've abused this thing a bit much, so I'm gonna go and get a different um, sponge cover. This is an old one. When you have a new one, I have a whole bunch of them, but 
they are fragile. They are fragile. So you do have to keep that in, in mind. You guys watched our video. <laughs> so remember I told you how my kids are, my kids say I'm cringy. Yes. So I showed them my video and they're just rolling their eyes at me, totally rolling their eyes at me. Um, I, my husband had a hard time watching it. We are not actresses, but although Lisa, you're really good. And she's so good at all the editing. Lisa did all that editing. So big props to Lisa, big time. My talented friend. Okay, so do you see how this body now has this vivid color and there's something to it there? So I like to use it for that purpose. Now, from there, my recommendation is, and I'm, you can go back and be, you can go back and forth between pencils and pan pastels. By the way, that's one of the other beautiful things that that they offer. I'm going to grab a couple pencils here, and I'll tell you what colors I'm using. I can't remember exactly which colors I used when I did this. Um. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we had fun. We had fun doing it. And but I will say, Lisa, that you looked a lot cooler than I did. I just looked like a complete idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and I did it all in one take. That was all in one take. So I will say I'm proud of that because, you know, at least it was funny. At least it was for good humor, right? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a really sharp white pencil. And again, I today I'm using my um, Chinese white Derwent drawing pencil. However, if you guys want to, you could use your Prismacolor. I just don't know what I did with my Prismacolor. I just ordered a few new ones and I will say I'm not real happy with them. I got them from Michael's because you had to order so many off of Amazon and I initially ordered them off of Dick Blick and they were completely out of them. They were impossible to find and I know some of you guys are probably having a hard time finding them too. Um, but the ones that I got from Dick Blick or from uh, Michael's are all like crumbling and I don't know why which is weird because I've never had that happen before with Prismacolor so I know some of you guys don't like Prismacolors and maybe that's why all right so what I what I did to achieve this effect here we have now laid down some color so I'm just going to show you how to do this and get you started and then you can go on with this and I'm going to move on to do the um, last uh, sorry, I'm stuttering today, background bit today, because I felt like I needed to do a cool background as a live stream because I have so many people sending me messages and asking me for ideas for backgrounds. And for years, I've had people saying, what can we do for background? What can we do for background? So I thought that this would be a good um, time to use that as well as show you some technique. And Lisa just did a, a video on um, peacock feathers, like big peacock feathers, so maybe that will help you here as well. Um, but I will post the green feathers for you, how I how I did these turquoisey green feathers, um, so you can watch that little video. I'm going to post it. I just have to edit it a little bit, and then I will post it um, on YouTube, and so you can watch that little part there. And what you'll, you will see is that I start this process, and I hate it. And then I go and take my electric eraser and I erase the whole thing out. So which I never do, but I did um, because I just couldn't, I couldn't get it back. But luckily I think it looks decent, maybe not my best work, but I think it looks decent now. Diane, maybe you were the one, somebody told me I needed to try the, the Chinese white for the last, um, the last live stream I did when I couldn't find my white prisma. I always have a missing white prisma, it seems. Oh, so maybe that's what's happening, Helen. I don't know. Well, I didn't get them at the store. I ordered them online. I haven't been going into any store since all the craziness started. So unless I have to, you know, like the grocery. But anyway, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up, even where you see some of this dark, I'm going to build up some texture. And the white pencil, what the white pencil is going to do is it's going to raise the value of these areas which means that I can then apply some more vibrant color on top of it, okay? 
Okay, so maybe it was you, Diane. Okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna move on with this. So, so what I did was thinking about a peacock's feathers and how they are, they are laid on top of one another. It's like layers. What I did was I created, and, and they're in different directions. I started just creating little flecks, little strokes. And I would use a, as sharp of a pencil as you have. And if you can't get it super sharp, take something. And, it, you know, I know some people use sandpaper and stuff. I don't think you need that for this. My, um, you could use a really good sharpener, like a T-Gall would be good for getting a really sharp point. This this pencil sharpener, I love this this pencil sharpener that I have. It's it's actually my favorite. It's really hard to get <clears throat> unless you live in Australia. Belinda got these a bunch of these for me. Um, <clears throat> sorry guys, frog in my throat. But you just want to get a nice sharp point so that you have a nice sharp line. So it's basically, and I kind of rotate my pencil as I'm working with it so I can keep it sharp. The lightest part is gonna be in this area here where the light is kind of hitting it. So if I'm gonna go any heavier somewhere, it would be right there. And I'm gonna add a couple little flecks even in the dark parts here. So I'm going to do a small patch here because I don't want to spend too much time on this, you guys. And like I said, with the other parts of the peacock, you can watch that once I put that up on YouTube, which I will do, I promise. If you have not subscribed, please do and please like this video. And again, I'm taking um, requests for what you guys would like to see. I know so many people want me to do skin tone stuff. I've done a lot of that stuff in my books. I don't think I've really done much in the way of videos. Okay, so you can see I'm adding this texture now, right? And if I were doing a perfect job, I'd go a little slower and I'd bend these lines a little bit. So there, there's a little more variation. Now, because peacocks are um, iridescent, if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of like violet in the feathers. So I'm using a little bit of pan pastel here. Or green somewhere, even a dark green. And it, it just makes it sing. It just makes it really pretty. All right, now, sharpen this pencil. I'm using, let's see how this one goes. This is PC 105, which is cobalt turquoise. We'll see how this goes. I'm not sure if this is the right color right now. No, not yet. Nope, too, too light. I think I used this. It was one of these guys. I don't even know how you pronounce this one. <clears throat> oh, I've got indigo here too. Indithrone blue. Let's see which one is. Huh, maybe I'll use my indigo. Okay, I'm going to use indigo, which is 901 sharp pencil and I'm going to go in between some of these feathers and very subtly I'm going to start adding some more definition. It's very subtle. This is sort of the cliff, cliff Notes version of what I did for the actual picture. So I just want to make sure you guys see this because I had some people who specifically wanted to watch this because they thought I was going to focus mostly on the peacock. And then I'm like, okay, so I guess we're going to do a little bit of the peacock too because I wanted to focus on the background with you guys. But 
that's okay. So Lisa was talking today about animals earlier. And how many of you guys have had strange animals? Because I have. I've always been really into different animals and I've never been afraid of animals. Um, the only thing I will tell you I do not like, I do not like spiders. But I've had some weird pets. I've had, I had a pet snake. Um, we found outside. I've had, I had a pet flounder. I actually walked up to a pet store when I was little. You need like an aquarium and stuff. I just had a fish bowl. And I came home, I didn't even tell my mom what I had done. And I came home with a pet flounder, <laughs> a freshwater flounder. Who knew? I had, yeah, and so I had a snake and what's up? I had, a, I've had a cockatoo. My mom um, had a cockatoo. That's a big white parrot bird. Spiders freak me out. And there was a spider on my desk the other day and I was like, oh my God, thank God I'm not going live right now. Cause you guys, it would probably go viral if you saw my reaction to spiders. I just don't do well with, with spiders. Okay, so I'm going to use some 920 and get some um, cool green in there. This is like a minty green. It's uh, light green. And I'm just going to add a little bit of color here. And you'll see because I put that white down, it allows me, it, it makes it like easier to see the shift in color. So this is a process of building and building and building. It really is. And make sure you get some of the edges of these feathers too, because that's what's really going to make them pop. <laughs> yes, the flower is very unusual. <laughs> um, we had a pet rat a couple years ago. My son had a pet rat, and she was actually super cool. She was like a little dog. Okay, now I'm gonna see if I can use this parrot green 1006. Sometimes you have to get a couple coats of white and lighter colors before these other colors will take. So I would recommend, sometimes you just have to play with it a little. But you can see it's starting to kind of come to life a little bit, right? A little bit. Now thinking about how a peacock's feathers are iridescent, I would recommend that you get some other iridescent colors in there. So I'm going to use a little bit, and I, I know this seems kind of weird, but I'm going to use a little bit of lilac 956. Or wait, was it this one? I can't remember which one I used. It would help if I wrote them down, wouldn't it? Oh, thank you, Diane. Yes, rats are so, so, so smart. We would call her and she would come. We'd walk into the bedroom because she lived in his room and she would come like running to the cage. She wanted to be picked up. Okay, this is a good one. So I'm using lavender, which is 934. And you can see how that picks up right away. You guys see that? So I'm getting into the actual dark, whoops, just broke that into the dark areas here and picking up what I call reflected light. I know I speak to you guys in a lot of art terms, but that's my, uh, that's how I learned it. That's how I was taught it. And it helps me to be able to explain it. So you could go into all of these feathers and do that. And then what I would do is I would go, I'm using my white again, trying to sharpen it. This pencil, this um, Derwent pencil is like a, the, 
barrel of the pencil is a little thicker, so I think, oh, that time it sharpened. Really nice. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to start adding some more white on top of the other area. So this is a really a process of layering. And I just wanted to show you how I did this because it would take me forever. I think this part alone took me a couple of hours just to do these feathers because it does take a long time because you need so many layers. And I'm kind of going from the bottom of each feather up because the, the stroke gets thinner towards the top if I do that. Sometimes I'll go the other way too, just because it's easier and I don't want to turn my page. <laughs> okay. So we're getting there, right? So it's starting to look like it. Now, the other thing I would do is I would go back in maybe with another green. So this green is 910. The other one that we used before was 920. So it's a lighter version of this same color. And I would hit a couple areas with the green, and that's how we're gonna get that iridescent effect. Yeah, so we had this rat for a couple years. Her name was Snuggle Nugget, and I used to, my, my joke was that she was my daughter, my only daughter. Okay, now my fingers are really dirty. I'm using light aqua, 992. Oops, sorry, out of the frame there, 992. And I'm gonna get a little bit, this is one of my favorite colors, you guys. I love this color. It just kind of sets everything on fire. It's magical. So you can see how I got into some of these little spots. And because peacocks have like an overall turquoise -y, bluish turquoisey feel. This is a good color to use a lot of in these feathers. Okay. And I might go back into some of my darker colors now and just try to make some um, more obvious lines of demarcation between the feathers. And there would be little shadows under some of these feathers as well. One feather laying on top of the next because they are layered. Okay, and then I'm just gonna show you in the end, if once you finish that, I would go back in and darken. I, I went back and forth, you guys, so many times using some different colors. So I used some dark blues, like this one is PC902, which is ultramarine, and I would go in underneath some of these feathers and try to really darken and get more blue in there. I went back and forth a few times between blues and blacks to really get the, the contrast and the saturation, which is tricky. That's not easy to do because one kind of um, knocks out the other sometimes. And I would do the same over here as well if you're trying to make this area look like it's picking up shadow. <laughs> I know, Snuggle Nugget, we just called her Snugs. She was so cute. She really was super sweet and she had to have a surgery actually because she injured her tail. It was really, really very sad. The end of her life was very, very sad. Rats do not live long lives or good lives. They are, many of them are very ill. They have tumors. She went blind. Um, and they have such short lifespans. If they didn't, I would be having, I would get more rats because she really was a great pet. Okay, so this is starting to come to life, right guys? So the last thing I would do, second to last thing I would do, is I would add some really dark, like black, I think I have black over here. And again, you can do another layer over this with more of like your ultramarine or cobalt type blues so that you intensify the shadow color a little bit more because we don't want to, sometimes black looks a little warm. So I don't like to use a ton of black in my shadows. 
but it's good for helping to define between um, some of the feathers and stuff like that. And again, you'd need to go through all of these with some more lights and some more darks because that's just one layer. It's not enough. But something I have been saying a lot lately, I've been noticing, I've had to remind myself, is if something isn't looking right, keep adding layers. A lot of times the secret is right in the layers. Um, <clears throat> They did carry the plague, but they were not the same kind of rats. Like those were like, you know, city dwelling rats. These are, um, oh my God, Lisa, I would freak out if I saw tarantulas. Oh, wow, Della. Oh, cool. I've never, I, you know what? I should try. I, I got a new TV. Gosh, I haven't even really used it. I got it, and I should start watching my YouTube videos on there, too. Um, I don't even remember what I was saying. I just lost track. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, so what I would do, now that I have the darks, more darks in here, I would get into some of these and define them a little bit. Then you could go back into, like, your um, ultramarine and add more blue on top of the black to cool it because again, the black is a little bit warm. So it's back and forth. Oh, I was talking about layers. So don't give up, just add more layers. Keep on adding layers. It might not look right at first, but don't give up. And then the other thing that I tell people, and I've written about it in my books, is walk away from what you're working on. In fact, one of the reasons I don't wanna show you the page that I've been working on yet, is that I need to walk away from it for 24 hours and then come back and look at it because I will notice all kinds of problems with it with a fresh set of eyes. Don't throw it away. Do not throw it away. Whatever you do, hang on to it. If that is, if there's any message to be had today, it is that. Okay. Um, so just know that. All right. So I think you guys kind of got an idea of how you do these feathers. Again, we'd want to extend more of the blues and blacks in here and maybe over here. And then you can go in in the end and you can add. Um, you know, like more whites down this sort of central area, and that will make this stuff pop out. And you can go in in between some of these strokes and clean them up. I'm kind of doing this messy, and I did a little bit of a neater job when I did it before. So, but I'm just trying to show you the, the technique as opposed to trying to be a perfectionist here. Okay, so you can go back in and, you know, if you see something that sticks out like a sore thumb, Clean it up, little things like that, and make it look better, okay? So that is my version of quick and easy peacock body feathers. And then, like I said, I'll post the this section right here later. Now, one thing I will show you just real quickly that I'll, you're also gonna see in this stuff is you see these highlighted little feathers here. Well, it's really hard to do that with pencil sometimes, you guys. So. Something that I have started doing, I have found some really good gel pens. This one here is a Milky Pop, which I've really started to like a lot. I also, you guys know I like the jelly rolls, but the jelly rolls have been drying up on me lately. I don't know if it's just I've had them sitting around for a long time. They weren't opened. Um, and then I have Pasca, these little mini ones. And I think that these are also on my um, Amazon Influencer shop if you guys have the link there um, but these are great because they're vibrant and they're like paint markers so they really will knock everything out below them and you can get some really good highlights in here I did some on this side too. Now I haven't added any color. Normally I would do this over some colored pencil, but I haven't even added the colored pencil there yet because I'm not doing this whole thing. But you can see how it, it just kind of makes that really pop. And if you want it to look more iridescent, then you can use a little bit of your Milky Pop too. I really go for colors. I heard Lisa today talking about how she, how she chooses her colored pencils based on colors, and it's so true. I have preferences as to my colored pencils for sure. You guys know I'm a total Prismacolor junkie, but 
I also realize that there are limitations of some of the the pencil company. Some of them have, they just do. Some of them have better selections than others as far as colors go. And same thing goes with pens. So I really liked this green color, which I don't even know what it's called. I don't think there's a number on here. Um, and then this blue, which is light blue, Pesca. They're really wonderful. Okay. Okay. So are you guys ready to do this part? We're going to work on this because we have about 45 minutes left and I want to show you how I did all of this. So as far as the, the order in which I did the progression, the first thing I did is what we are doing right now, which I, I worked on the peacock's body. I finished him and as soon as I finished him, I started working on this part right here. I don't know if you guys know how to do that, but I just want to show you real quick if I can get one of my gel pens to work to create this effect. I have not tried this with a Milky Pop, so this is going to be an experiment. I think it'll be okay though. So what I would recommend is you carefully go over some of your lines. And Lisa drew some really beautiful lines here. Which, by the way, we talked in our little um, video about not wanting to do in other artists' pages. This was, this was very enjoyable for me. Also very challenging, too, because she draws differently than I do. So I had to kind of make it my own, too, to, make, to figure out what made sense for me. But I don't ever color any other artist stuff, mainly because I just don't have time. I don't even normally have time to color my own stuff. I just try to get pages out as much as I can. So and I'm really excited to show you that page that I'm almost done with. It should be done Monday. Um, it is a portrait. It's kind of, it was inspired by everything going on in the world right now. But sort of a positive spin on that because the world is crazy right now. It's, it's hard to believe it's our world. And it was nice for me. I wasn't feeling well last week, you guys. Lisa knows this, but I didn't make it public knowledge. I wasn't feeling well, and I haven't really been exposed to anybody. But you worry, you know, even, you know, picking up food in a store or whatever, even though we've been safe. And I went and had a COVID test done, and thankfully it was negative. But I didn't feel well um, for about a week. And during that time, I don't know if I just had some other virus. During that time, um, I did some drawing. I was like lying in bed and I couldn't focus on anything else. So I did some drawing. So I started this drawing and it was really very um, therapeutic for me. Okay, so I'm just going to do this last flower. and I'm going to show you how I did this part. Because this is really fun and easy and... A different effect. So I'm using another Milky Pop and the reason that I've chosen this is that it's milky. It's exactly what it is. I'm having trouble, I'll show you, I'm having trouble with my um, with my jelly rolls. So this is a white jelly roll. Look, it just does not want to come out. And it was coming out perfectly the last time that I used it. So I don't know what's going on with these, but all of them, I have like four of them here. Um, and normally I recommend them, but this is so frustrating. So I just use this, hopefully it'll work okay. And you guys can see in here that I've created this, I just wanna show you another use for pan pastels here. This is so easy and it's so nice to do this. So this is something else that you can do. So you can take your pan pastel once this dries completely. Just want to make sure it's dry. Then you just go in and you kind of fill in the areas that you want to fill in. I think I went a little heavy there. And it kind of, you can still see the lines through it. So it has, it's a nice quick way to fill in some shapes. And it gives it a different effect entirely. It's not the same as colored pencils because you're kind of just going right over it. And then you can change your color. So I'm going to use a little bit of like this pinky magenta. I think this was magenta. Magenta. It is. Use a little magenta. 
And I'll do this flower in here. So you see how quick that went? Hi, Shelly, I didn't even see you there. Bruce, yes, I'm reading your um, your question. That is such a great question. So Bruce asked, when you're drawing a page, are you specifically thinking of making it colorable? 100%. I, um, I have learned, it took me a while to understand what people liked about coloring pages and what they didn't like and what, what works, what doesn't work. And um, for me, I, I am what I refer to as a noodler. I like little details. And I do believe that a lot of people like to color little details. So I kind of do drawings that have little details on them too. Um, but I definitely think about how other people are going to be coloring all of this and how it's going to affect them um, for sure. This, of course, hold on one sec, my... Hmm, that's weird. I don't know why it's, for some reason, my, um, oh, interesting, Lisa. That's a good one. My, um, my little, I'm going to try relinking to this one again. I'm not sure what happened to it. I have my phone sitting here. Oh, now it's coming up right. It was weird. It wasn't showing anything. Hi, Patty. Okay, so that's how I did this back part. But yes, I do always think about how a colorist is going to need to color this. It's really important. All right, let's get to the nitty gritty here real quick because we don't have a lot of time. And I would like to do a giveaway today too if I don't screw it up. Um, Okay, so let me just try this. I wanted to see if this would work. I'm going to channel my inner Lisa. I have a Conte um, pastel pencil here, and I just wanted to see if this would work too. But what I basically did to create this effect here was I went around using some white, um, I used white pan pastel, which you can do, and I also used along these edges, I used um, white colored pencil. The last thing I did on this entire thing was the black because I didn't want the black to get pan pastel all over it and it was permanent marker so I knew it would cover stuff up. So basically what I did to create this and we'll try doing it this way and then I think I might use some pan pastel too was I sort of made a divider. I, I sort of pictured like an imaginary divider in the middle and I'm using right now I'm using this um, pastel which is like chalk you guys can use colored pencil too. This just goes on faster and easier. It might save us a little bit of time. So if I go over some of these shapes, it's no big deal because you could go over it with a marker after. No big deal. And that is why I chose to, one of the reasons that I chose to do it the way I did because I knew it would get a little messy. So I kind of figured like right here is going to be the lightest area. I have fingerprints in here for my hands. Oh my gosh, look at how dirty my hands are. Hand pastel is actually a lot neater than regular pastel, but it still can get messy. Sorry guys, my stream turned off here. I just want to make sure you can see that we're still live. So I'm going around all of this. And this is where like pan pastels are really nice to use. They really are. I'll show you in just one sec. So I would go in between some of these areas here because they're easy to get into now before the marker is on there. Sorry, I'm not at the screen there. I didn't even put my granny glasses on today. So 
So I'm just using a little bit at a time and getting in there, okay? Good job. Can you guys see this okay? I think I slid it up after the fact because of our delay. I realized it. Okay, so I, I basically have just added in, I want to create sort of a glow around this top part. And you can do it either using a pastel pencil like this, you could use your um, regular color, white colored pencil, or, let's see here what I have. Clean this off, just a second. I'm gonna try using a little bit of white and pastel. And here's my, my um, palette. There's a little bit of white. So the other way you could do it would be to go in with a pointed tip and around your shapes. And of course you can go over it with marker if you go over some of these areas. No big deal. The nice thing about using that pastel um, pencils that you can blend these together. Okay, and again, you could use Q-tips. Q-tips too. Q-tips work. So even if you don't have all the same fancy tools that I do right here right now, it all works. So I'm just going to sort of stroke up this way. Uh, you can't do this with a color, this part with a colored pencil. It's not going to move it. Um, but you can use more colored pencil and you can blend your colored pencil a little bit. And then I'm going to use some of this pastel, this pan pastel, which is my violets. And you can see how quickly you can fill it in. It fills in really quickly. Now what I do is I kind of drag this down over the white. So I get like a nice misty effect here. And you can go into some of these areas too if you'd like and you know try to get in there. I would use the pointed tool or my Q-tip to get in here. I wanted to get in there perfectly. I think I'm going to probably just get one side of this done for you guys today. You just do the same thing on the other side. You just mirror it. Yes, stick pastels will work too, Abby. Um, but again, I would use um, an X-Acto knife to, like I did earlier today to show you guys, um, to and make sure that they're chalk pastels, not oil pastels, to shave off a little bit of the pastel. So you could use you could do that, you could use eyeshadow, they will all work. But this pan pastel, the reason that I recommend it is because of the vibrancy and the fact that it sticks and it does not make as nearly as much of a mess as regular pastel would. Or eyeshadow, because that's really dusty. So now I'm gonna go in and try to smooth this out. I'm kind of dragging it through here a little bit. You guys see that? And I did use a little bit of the magenta in here as well. So I will use a little just for some color variation and to plug up some of this tooth. And then you could either use some pan, white pan pastel on top or you could go back into your Conte and combine. Just depends on what you're more comfortable with. And that Conte is the uh, pastel pencil. You could use any pastel pencil. So the beautiful thing about um, the pan pastels is that you can combine them with so many other materials and they really take well. So I just put some more pan pastel on white on my knife. 
I'm smearing my peacock. You guys should have something under your hand to cover up this area if you've done that first. Do as I say, not as I do, right? And I'm trying to get these like a vertical stroke here. And even if I go over this butterfly a little bit, it's okay because I can cover it up with a color pencil later. So you can see how it's like blending and it's kind of fuzzy now. I'm just adding a little more white, layers and layers and layers. And yeah, you can plug up your, your all of the tooth here and then run out. I know some people do spray their pen pastel and then put another layer on. Um, unfortunately, it's hard to find the right spray to do that. There are some out there that do work, but some of them are glossy and then it won't stick on there anymore. So you have to know, if you're not done with it, you have to know what you should be using. Okay, so I've gone into here, I've added some more color, some more variation, I'm plugging it up. And then after that, I'm gonna go in with my colored pencils and maybe that Conte, I like that one, it's kind of cool. And I can color on top. I can, I can add some more color variation. And sometimes, you guys know I actually use a lot of neon colors when I'm coloring because I like the vibrancy of them. You could use neon colors, you could use um, just really bright pinks, um, or light pinks, let's see what I have here like this hot pink color here would be good. And you go right over the pan pastel and you can blend it together. And this will warm up that color a little bit. So even if you don't have a million pan pastel colors, you're combining, it's, mul it's a multimedia or mixed media. Um, you're combining them and it looks beautiful in the end. I'm using this, this hot pink right now, which is, sorry, I didn't tell you the number, 993. I didn't use that the last time. I'm not sure what I used. I had all my pencils out. I left all my pencils out and I can't figure out what I used. I usually make myself little notes and I think with everything going on right now, I've been a little overwhelmed. So I'm going in here and I'm just kind of blending out so that this, this beautiful soft blend here will go into these shapes as well. And then after, you can go back in with your white and feather that out or soften it, whatever you need to do. And then I use the white kind of on the top to blend back into the pan pastel. This is just my regular white colored pencil right now. You could do this entirely in pastel. You wouldn't have to, you don't even have to use colored pencils. You could use just different pastels to do this part. Or pastel pencils, I should say. So that's how we get kind of this misty effect. You guys starting to see it? All right, should we try to do a giveaway, guys, before I run out of time? I'm thinking we should, because we only have a half hour left, and I want to finish at least this side for you. So I will try to do a giveaway. I hope I don't screw this up, okay? But for my giveaway, we are going to do, if you have not purchased my animal bundle for this event, these are three pages from the book Bella Futura. For this giveaway, you will get the animal bundle. It's all three pages. And I'm going to do this. <clears throat> are my admins all ready for me? Because I'm going to do um, 
the numbers one through 100. I'm gonna put my rules up here so you guys can see. These are the rules, I'm gonna read them for you. Make sure you understand how this works and hopefully I don't screw this up. If I do, forgive me and we'll try again. <laughs> Um, okay, so make sure you're in live chat view. No chatting once I say no chatting. Be respectful of the other players and mods. Um, if they need to remove your comment, it's nothing personal. Choose one number and only one number between one and 100. Once you choose your number, that is your number. Choose wisely. You cannot retract your number. Like Bob Barker used to say, the winner is closest to the random number without going over. You will hear me say go, 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 and stop, stop, stop. But only post when you see it in chat. So I'm gonna say it first, and then you're gonna see me actually post it. It'll come up, it'll pop up yellow, because that's me. Once you see that, you can start putting your numbers, but do not do it before, it will not count. Once um, we're done with this, whoever wins this, the person closest to the number without going over, please make sure you message, it, message me within 24 hours to my Facebook artist page and I will send you your prize, okay? All right, you guys ready for this? Who's ready for this? I'm ready for this. Um, I am gonna have to pull up real quick my, my randomizer, if I can remember how you do this. Okay. Um, Sorry guys, it's not coming up for me. One sec. Technical difficulties, oh here we go, okay. All right you guys, <clears throat> sorry. So I am about to um, tell you to go, so get ready to go and go, go, go. I'm going to give you a minute. 1 to 100. 1 to 100. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Are we slowing down, you guys? No, oh, I see some more coming in. All right, it looks like we are slowing down here. Oh, Sherry, is that two? You can only enter one. You can only enter it once. Just one number. All right, I'm giving you ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. All right. Whew. So let's see. I'm going to have to scroll back here and take a look at these numbers here. And here is my generator. For this prize, this is the number um, closest to this number without going over. And here we go. Ready? 48. Oh, whoops. Sorry, you guys. I'm in the wrong screen. Sorry, sorry. This is what happens when you're, you're tech, uh, <laughs> when you're, you're counting on yourself to do this. The number is 48. I knew I was going to screw something up. Okay, so who is the closest to 48 without going over? Bruce had 35. You guys can't, can you see it? Should be working now. Did I? 
Am I good? Did you guys get it? Is it Bruce? <laughs> I'm sorry. I told you I was going to screw something up. Bruce, let's see. I am seeing Bruce. Okay, I think it was Bruce. <laughs> sorry, you guys. Sorry, you guys. So Bruce, I think I think that you are my winner. Bruce, yes, Bruce. Yay, everybody say congrats, Bruce. So Bruce is my first winner. Okay, I'm good. I'm going to do this the second time. Um, we're going to do another prize right now. Okay, but Bruce, if you would like to um, claim your prize, just make sure that you go on my um, Facebook artist page and send me a message with your email address and I will send it to you. Okay. Yay. Okay. Yeah, it's you, you, you have to go closest to the number without going over. So this is 48. The number was 48. So if you went over. Okay, so Bruce won. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, so my next prize is going to be, oh, you can choose one of these three pages. I've got my um, Sleeping Beauty Mermaid with her um, octopus friend. I've got my Freedom Fighters. This is a little duo here with her little monkey. And then I have Princess Robina with her baby bird. And you get to choose which page you want for this second giveaway. You guys ready for this one? We're going to do this again. I'm going to do this right this time. Hold on a second. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to go back to my iPad. So here we are. Okay. So I am going to say go, go, go. And when I do that... And wait until you see it actually typed up there, and that's when you're going to start wow. entering your numbers 1 through 100. Okay, you ready? Go, go, go. Okay, you guys have about a minute. Enter your numbers 1 through 100. You get to choose which page you'd like. I'm going to give you about 20 more seconds. 20 more seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Okay. So I'm going to say stop, stop, stop. All right. At this point, there can be no more entries. And I am in the screen now, and I'm going to generate the number for you guys here. Are you ready? Seven. Who is the closest to number seven without going on or over? Is anybody? Oh. We didn't have any winners. All right, I'm going to generate one more. Because that didn't work out very well. Try this one more time. Ready? 20. All right, who do we have? I see Abby. And Abby, it looks like Abby to me, right? <laughs> it was Abby. Okay, Abby. I am going to give that page or give you one of those pages. I'm going to do one more here because I feel like let's do one more with with one more set of numbers and then and then we'll uh, we'll call it a day. Okay, so I'm going to congrats, Abby. <laughs> Abby might have all my stuff, though. I'm not sure. 
Okay, I'm gonna do one more. So um, when I say it, and you, when I say it, please be on the lookout um, first. Make sure that you time it with the actual post that I make on there, okay? Don't go by my voice because there is a delay. All right? Is it Michelle or Abby? I think Michelle was the last. That was the last one, hon. I think that was the last one, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, so I am going to do one more here, okay? I'm pretty sure we got that right. We'll look over that. I'll have the, ad, the um, admins look over that again. And just make sure. One last one here. Okay, you guys ready? Because I'm going to tell you to go in just a second. Was Michelle in this last one or was that the first um, prize? I think. Hmm. We got to make sure we're looking at the right grouping here. I'm pretty sure that it was. Oh, it was Michelle. Okay, Michelle and Abby, you guys can both. You guys will both get them. <laughs> I screwed up that too. Told you. Told you I would. Okay, so Michelle and Abby. Okay, um, so Michelle and Abby. Okay, since I screwed up, you're both getting pages. And I'm going to do one more, okay? Again, the prize will be choose which grayscale page you'd like. Up to you. One of my animals and ladies. Um, and then we will go from there, okay? All right, so I'm gonna say it in just a second and I need you guys to get ready. So, I'm going to just put this back. And here we, we are gonna go. So go, go, go. Oops. Okay, so this will be the last grouping here, last prize. Keep them coming. I'm gonna give you about 10 more seconds. Last prize, you choose which one. And then make sure if you've won, make, make sure you message me. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Okay, let me just put my stop in here. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. All right, you guys ready? It's in the screen this time. I'm not gonna screw this up. Are you ready? We're gonna look over these names super carefully. 81, 81 is our number. Who, oops, who is closest to 81? Without going over. Ooh, Diane, you're really close there. Diane is at 78, Adele is at 79. I think it's Della. Is it Della? I'm looking one more time. 78, 79. Is it Della? Yeah, I think it's Della. Hi, Shell. I think it's Della. Okay, Della, I think it's Della. Della, you are our winner. Yay, Della. So Della gets to choose. I should have just put this down. I don't know why I didn't do that sooner. Della gets to choose um, which page she'd like. So yay, Della.
I think we can all agree on that one. Yay. Okay. So we are good. I've done my giveaways. I've got about 15 minutes left. I'm going to try to get the bottom of this uh, page done for you guys. So you can at least see how that works and how I blend it all together a little bit better. Okay, I'm gonna put my little, that was fun. It wasn't so bad, right? We did okay after the whole deal. Awesome. Thank you guys. Awesome. Thank you for playing. Thank you for like getting me used to this because I will do a lot more of these for you. All right, so I'm getting back to my getting back to work here. Um, I'm going to use my pan pastel and a little bit more of this um, pinkish magenta color here, but I'm going to mix it with some white separately. I don't want it to be quite so overpowering. Thank you, Diane. I hope you guys are having fun. I, um, I'm i sorry I'm not getting as much done as I hope to, but you guys know I'm super slow. I am always slow. I'm always a lot slower than you think I am. And I tell my clients if I'm doing commissions, I'm like, <laughs> just expect it to take an extra couple weeks. Whatever I quote you, it's not realistic. So I'm using my magenta to kind of get this part in here sort of quickly. And because I sort of mapped out where that white needs to go, it makes it easy for me to know where I want to move this up to, where this should go. Oh, thanks, Shell. Yeah, it's fun. I wish I could get more done, but you guys know I'm super slow. Super, super slow. And I did take video of some of the other feathers, so I'm going to make a little video and put that up on, um, on YouTube. So you guys can watch that. Yay! If you have not subscribed, please do. There will be a lot more coming now that I'm all set up with my fancy schmancy setup here. Okay, so now that I've added a lot more color on here, you could go back in with either your white colored pencil or a or the pastel and because I am channeling my inner Lisa today I'm just going to go with the pastel. Oh it doesn't fit in there. Hmm, interesting so I think I have to in order to use this pencil I think I need to use a knife to sharpen it and I don't have one handy so I can't really sharpen it. Um, I didn't think about that. It does not fit my pencil sharpener. Oh, something else that you guys can use. I'll show you this. So I'm right now I'm using the pastel. Again, you could use regular white colored pencil. I will show you that too. You just won't be able to blend it after. You have to blend it while you're drawing with it. So I'm trying to keep the lightest part in here so that it looks like the light is emanating from the center outwards and down in this case. I would get into all these little crevices here and here. And again, you could use this pastel pencil or you could use white pan pastel or you could use white colored pencil. It is up to you. I like to use a variety of materials because to me it makes it a lot more interesting. Okay, so the other thing I was going to show you you can do if we're talking about pastels is I have these tortillions. Um, oh, I didn't even open these ones that I have here. Oh, brand new. So I have these, they're like paper stumps. Um, and if you are using all pastel, then you can blend and get more of a, that misty effect by using one of these for sure. You can see how that just sort of smooths it out. 
Yay, that giveaway was kind of fun, even though I screwed up, right? You guys know that <laughs> I get an A for effort, right? You have the same white pencil? Is it the, um, well, this one that I've been using was the Conte. This is the Conte, and I put this on my Amazon list because I do like these. I use these in art school. I have not been using pastel pastel for a long time, but I did use these in art school. But you can also use, like I said, you can also use your regular white um, coloring pencil, the wax-based pencil, or even oil-based pencil on top but you're not gonna be able to blend it as easily with like a tortillion or, or a blending stump. It actually is blending pretty nicely, surprisingly. So I'm just trying to create sort of striations between, and make sure I get into all the little spots, the little crevices. Bye, Shell. Are you leaving? Oh no, Helen's leaving. Bye, Helen. And then I'm just smoothing this out a little. And pastel, just by nature, has sort of a bumpy, lumpy, sits on top of the paper um, effect. So if you want to go over the, that with the wax pencil, you can do that too, and that will push it down. Or, I mean, you could use um, a blender, a pencil, a blender pencil. I'm just going back and forth between everything today, just trying to try everything out. Being very experimental, I was way more experimental with this page than I normally am. And I think it was because I was working on somebody else's art, which was definitely a, a fun little challenge for me. Now I'm back to my my uh, lavender, which is 934. 934. I'm going to write all these colors down for you. I will put them to the, in the description in case you try this on your own if you're not working with me right now. And again, the, the combination of all these materials together will make it smoother, softer, flow better, so on and so forth. So hopefully that's starting to come to life a little bit. Can you see that? Starting to get that sort of smoky effect there. You guys see that? making sure I'm keeping up on chat. And again, I use a couple different colors. I'm going back into my hot pink here. You guys could use like a magenta pencil, which I thought is what I use, but I don't see it over here. So maybe I grabbed it the other day when I was doing something else. I tried to leave these pencil colors out so that I would know what I used. I usually have a method to my madness, but this time I screwed up and did not write it all down. When I'm doing the tutorials for my tutorial books, I write every single thing down, every step, everything. Otherwise, I can't remember what I've done. Sometimes I'm working on different ones, um, you know, at the same time, depending on what stage I'm at. And I try to use a lot of natu natural light in my photographs. So I only photograph it at certain times of the day or the colors will look washed out. So hopefully... You guys are starting to see this sort of misty, smoky effect. And again, I would put something, your hand is going to get dirty like mine, and you're going to smear your page like I'm smearing mine. Put something under there. I did not do that. And I'm going to go back in with a little bit more. This one I'm going to use, this is um, 1008 Permaviolet. I'm going to add just a couple strokes here just for some darkness to tie it in a little bit to the above part. And then I'm going to show you the last little bits of how I made this kind of look magical. Or at least I think it kind of does. 
a little bit more of this pink over here. I'm going to flip my page so it's easier to get this part over here. And I'm using my hot pink again. I want to get some more striations over there. So I'm going to go back in with my regular white pencil and kind of create some more here. And you see how it like blends the colors below it. That's the cool thing about blending these products together. It actually really works. Now I don't know how that would work with eyeshadow or regular pastel if that is all you're using. If you're using a combination of pastel and pan pastel, it'll be fine. But because I am not doing that, I cannot honestly tell you if it will work exactly the same way. But again, I highly recommend that you get yourself some pan pastels. If you're gonna try out a couple colors, think about what you'd like to use them for. They're not super expensive. You can buy an individual pan pastel. Some of the colors are like five bucks, seven bucks a piece. You can buy them individually on Amazon. Um, I have a bunch of them listed. Depends on what you want to do with them because they're great for skin tones as well. So they make a skin tone set or you can buy the skin tones individually um, and like get a couple at a time and just keep adding to your collection. Yep, the Chinese white pencil. Gotta love it. Okay, and then once I've added these colors on there, I'm going to go back into some of my brighter pinks, my lighter colors, and add more. So you can see I'm layering it, you guys. And sometimes I will add a layer of white before I add um, other stuff. And that's, I think, sort of a similar thing as to what Lisa does with her um, chalk pastels. It's a very similar effect. Although she's using hers for light placement more so than um, the overall texture, I think. But it, in the end, it has kind of the same effect. Okay. Okay, I'm going to show you one last little bit, and then we'll be done. That's looking pretty cool, right? And again, if you want it more faded or you want to add more white, add more layers. Add more layers. This one actually got a little bit smoother than that one. Um, and what I did to get these little effects here, by the way, another um, product I just started using. Do I have it here? Uh, yes, I do. I just started using this. Have you guys ever used one of these? Um, Molotow, Molotow, Molotow. So it's a paint marker. Be careful because they do spew. They're very, very liquidy. But they're really nice if you're trying to get some really bold, um, more bold than like a regular gel pen. They're a little bit more opaque and more, f the, the ink flows a little bit more. I do have this on my Amazon store now. Oh wait, I don't know if I have this one on my Amazon store. I think I need, this is the one thing I needed to add. So I will add it. So I apologize. Everything else is on there. So I get in between some of these couple bigger ones and I sort of sprinkle them so that they look gives it sort of that mystical magical effect and then if you want to if you do have a darker color I am using my Posca I do have a purple Posca here so let's say this is violet which is actually the correct name for the color and I'll add a couple little bits of this violet as well that would be really pretty to put like a hot pink in here too. Now I'm just going to use a regular gel pen, gel pen to try. So this again is the Milky Pep. Milky Pop, sorry. Milky Pop. So it does work really nicely. The Malata one is a little bit more opaque though. So that is the overall effect. 
And I think that we accomplished what we set out to accomplish. I wish I would have gotten the other half done for you, but you know, I talk too much. I'm slow. I'm sorry. But I did get to show you these feathers. And I will put the video um, that I did on how I did these feathers and these feathers here. I will put that on YouTube as well. Okay. And for this background, I just used more of the pan pastels. I used red. I used a little bit of that yellow color. Um, but you guys sort of, I think, got a little glimpse into how I was able to accomplish this. Um, I'm just making sure I don't have um, uh, pencil or pan pastel all over my face because, you know, that would happen. I once went to a meeting was judging kids' art and art competition for school, and they won a huge scholarship. And I sat through the whole meeting. No one told me. I'd spilled coffee in the car on the way there, and I splashed it. And I had a giant circle of brown on the end of my nose. And no one said anything to me. <laughs> so I went through the entire meeting. I don't even know how anybody took me seriously. But um, anyway, um, I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do ring the bell. Give this a thumbs up if you had fun. If you want me to do more of these, please tell me what you would like to work on, what you want me to work on with you guys. I do gems. If you haven't seen any of my gem videos in the past, there are a whole bunch of them on YouTube. I do... Um, hair and skin tones because I do a lot of portraits. Again, I have a portrait that will be done by Monday. And I really believe it will be done by Monday because I'm almost done with it. I just need to tweak it. Um, and I think you guys will really like it. Um, and so look in my Etsy shop for that. Please share this video if you think it will be useful to someone. And what does this say here? Please post your finished Kevin on Lisa's Facebook group. Yeah, it already is on there. It is on. It is in Lisa's Facebook group. Um, <laughs> yay. I'm glad you guys, it looks like you guys had fun. So that makes me happy. That makes me really happy because all this stuff, it always makes me really nervous right in, up till the event itself takes place. And I'm always really happy to teach you something and... Um, I love teaching. I used to teach, you know, all different grade levels, art and public schools, and I miss it, although I would not want to be a teacher right now with the decisions that are the difficult decisions that have to be made and everything right now. I'm glad I'm not doing that. Um, but I do feel for my friends who are teaching um, and all of our kids. Um, but anyway, it is so nice to be able to collaborate with you. It's so nice to connect on a whole different level with you guys and teach you something and actually be of assistance. And this whole process of working with Lisa has been awesome. She's an amazing person, an amazing artist, and she and Adrian are fantastic. Um, I'm so grateful for their help because they really did help to steer me here to get all the fancy, fancy stuff done. So um, anyway, I really appreciate your being here and sticking around, and um, I hope to see you guys soon, okay? So take care. Enjoy your Saturday. Relax a little. If you haven't started coloring, you can gather your supplies and get started, and I will be back at some point real soon, I promise, okay? All right, guys. See ya.